Today is the day we have reached December 1st in our household. We have passed Connie's favorite, which is Thanksgiving. We get to benefit from Connie's favorite with pies and pumpkin lush, and you got to ask what that is, but it's very, very good. And and everything else that goes along with Thanksgiving. In fact, uh, we have a, not a, it's not a joke, we laugh about it a lot, uh, usually, and, and I have to say, it did happen here too, um, and, but usually, uh, see I like cranberry jelly. Connie's family likes fresh cranberries put into a cranberry dish. Um, I'm, I don't know what it is. It's black you know. It's jelly. It's that kind that comes out of the can like dog food. You know what I'm talking about. But I love it. And usually every Thanksgiving, um, I'm going to say the day after, the weekend after, you open up the pantry and there it is. <laughs> Still in the can. Oh, we missed the Thanksgiving. That happened here. Like, I'm looking around and I'm like, oh, there's a... We missed the can of jelly, the cranberry jelly that was in the refrigerator here at the church for our Thanksgiving dinner. Um, so, but this year, <coughs> that jelly made the table. And so I had cranberry jelly. I'm going to say this, it's kind of like Brother Bud was joking around with me about how so much there is, and you get so full, and, and we're talking about it, like, yeah, you're trying to figure out how to save room for that one piece, make room on your plate for that one thing. And then I told Brother Bud, I go, I just look at it and forget it. It's an all-day event. It will hit sometime on that plate. And so uh, the kids are like, the cranberry jelly is out. And so, did, how did you get yours? And I'm like, yeah, I got mine. But here's what happens. You can only eat, I'm the only one that eats it, so you can only eat so much of that can. Okay? And, uh, man, I sure enjoy Thanksgiving season. I hope you guys did, too. Not just to... Um, eat, but all, see, eating is surrounded by something. Um, if you're of one of the other families within this congregation, you sit with almost a hundred people. <laughs> and I'm like, wow! We're like seven, eight, eleven, wow! <laughs> but a hundred, can you imagine a hundred people for Thanksgiving? And it was still, see, it's not about just the food, it's about what surrounds it. The joy of eating with family. That's why I can tell you what, when we have our church family Thanksgiving dinner, man, it's like a double joy. Because you got that, you know, other time has come with other family members and stuff, but you guys are the church family. And so um, it is a joy to gather and eat with that. But I think it was Friday. Elijah, they're downstairs. They are also talking about hope downstairs with their activity and their story time. Um, on Friday, something lit up within him. And I, what day is it? See, we have a countdown little calendar that, that they, and they, for a while, there was a couple of days, where a lot of days, they didn't change how many days till Christmas. It was like 39 for a long time. And then all of a sudden, they changed it and they were talking about Christmas is uh, December's coming or something like that, and he thought it was the next day because he has in the cupboard a or, or in the refrigerator a chocolate advent calendar, and what that is is it counts the 25 days of Christmas, you know, of the season, and he can't wait to open that door. I don't know if he did it yet, but today is the day. Um, I was say that that boy was hoping that that chocolate would be ready to eat and have it in his hand. <laughs> everyone needs hope. Yes. Not everyone, uh, and actually, if we looked around as an individual, everyone has hope available to receive, but everyone needs hope. It kind of reminds me of, uh, uh, and I'll say it this way, because when you talk about hope, because everybody hopes, I joked about Elijah hoping for chocolate. Um, we hope, um, there's people that hope for this or hope for that at a high level, uh, almost an envious level. I, I, I hope I can get that. I hope I can get that. 
the greatest of hope that everyone needs. It reminds me of a song before I get into hope, and that is uh, uh, Mighty to Save. Everyone needs a Savior. And it goes on. Why? Because God is mighty to save. And I think about that, especially even in the Christmas season. What a mighty, mighty song about God who is mighty to save. That's exactly what hope is. Hope is for everyone. God has a plan, or has always had a plan, that involved hope for everyone. Foretold early on. God's plan centered around a specific, a specific person. A specific man. Hope revolved around Jesus. Yes. We, man, this morning was a great song. What was it not? Uh, I don't know if you guys are, I'm, I'm Christmas uh, song fan. Uh, uh, Michelle, Michelle, uh, even before Thanksgiving, Coast 103.5, before Thanksgiving, turns their radio station into 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Christmas music. And so, if she gets in our car, the station changes. <laughs> in her car, it stays on that station. But there's so many Christmas songs. And if you had paid attention to the words that were spoken in our Advent reading, to the words that were sung in the songs that we sang, a lot of them were about a prophecy. A lot of them were about hope for a nation. Hope for a people. You'll notice the, uh, the songs were, uh, that Israel was mentioned so much. You have hope, Israel. And, and, and with that kind of a thought process, that hope, especially from, let's go um, uh, with our scriptures. If you go to the Old Testament, when I talk about prophets saying, there is one that is coming. There is one that is coming that is going to be, I'm going to get into a little bit of what it talks about, but there's one that is coming. There's one that is coming. So you get this expectation. We even said, sang a song about the expectation. We, and so with that, can you imagine, those people had to have hope because of certain circumstances. One of the, the ones that I really um, enjoyed was, uh, O come, O come, Emmanuel. <clears throat> And do what? And ransom captive Israel. Now I'm going to tell you this. When you have, uh, when you are taken captive, what are you hoping for? Freedom. And so you have someone who comes up to you and starts writing, not just saying words, but having written down words to remember, just so you don't forget, there is one that is coming. Oh, come Emmanuel. Rescue us. Ransom us. We're, we're not even in the place we belong. We're in exile. Cheer our spirits by thy advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadow put to flight. You know what? Unless you... See, talk about hope. Hope in the Savior, Jesus Christ. Death has no meaning. See, people sing these songs during Christmas time, they just sing the words, not even grasping what, the, what, what it means to have Emmanuel come and take death, and it's gone. It's on its flight. I've been ransomed. Oh, come thou wisdom from on high. Ordered all things far and nigh. To us the path of knowledge show and cause us in her ways to go. See, hope that was in the Old Testament, the hope that they had to have in this plan that God has, it had to only come from God. Because all these outside circumstances take over. 
or seem to take over. But when you have hope in the one that is on high God, and then you ask him to give you the knowledge of what that hope plan is, and then he gives you that, and you take steps with him. Hope would come from a line that only God could do. It would only come from uh, uh, the tribes of Judah, we sing in songs. But then when you read the scriptures, you find out, you know what? God's plan of hope not only came from the tribe of Judah, but it came from the tribe of Benjamin. It came from this tribe of, of the 12 tribes of the tribe. It came out of those. God used places and people in certain circumstances so that hope would be played out in his plan. Hope would come in Abraham. Think about it, because we've had these scriptures just most recently. Abraham, where I promise you, I make a covenant with you that what lies ahead for you will be descendants that you will never ever be able to count. A guy and a guy who had a wife that was past childbearing age. Man, I hope I have a son. Man, I hope I have a son. Man, I hope I have a son. We joked around this week, this, this week, <laughs> because if you know my family, I have three daughters. Um, uh, Ashley, our oldest, which was a, a year after we were married, and then shortly after that was Michelle, and then shortly after that was, uh, well, not shortly, a little bit after that was Lauren, and then there was Boomer. The joke was finally. <laughs> See, I'm looking at my clock. I got time. You were not joking. When Michelle was coming, we already had Ashley, and when Michelle was coming, um, uh, and Connie had names picked out, but we battled this name, not battled, we discussed this name. And Michael Thomas, I just thought, what a cool name. That would be a cool name. And as Michelle was being born, the doctor goes, wow, the, the shoulders are kind of wide. It might be a boy. Oh. It was not. Please, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I love all my daughters. They, they have special spots in my heart. And so does Boomer, because not just because he's a boy, but finally I joke about that. <laughs> I hope I, I almost this when their hope is on, I have to have a boy. In our life, you have Abraham who has hope in having a son. You have, if you go through Matthew chapter 1, in fact, that's where we're going to be at this morning. In Matthew chapter 1, a lot of times um, during the Christmas season or um, uh, in other places, you'll see where in Matthew chapter 1, they read the lineage, the line. They read the birth chart of, of what takes place in this plan of hope. And in this plan of hope, it starts off with Abraham. And then it has, I'm not going to go through all of them, but there's some that just pop out. Like, you know who else it had in that line? Ruth's mother. Wow. You know, think about this. What I read, like, when I read the story of Ruth, and I might be wrong, it might not be the same one, but when the name Ruth comes out to me, I think of hope. Because remember, she had, she had nothing. Their husbands passed away. The mother-in-law was almost trying to send her away. Now I have, and she didn't say it this way, but it has to be this way. I have only hope in your God, because your God will be my God. When you go through this, the, the lineage of what takes place, you have where there's the promise that was in the scriptures that we had read this morning about that line. I promise to you, David will have in his line the one that we call the Son of God. David. And see, you know what I like about God's plan? 
is the world is messed up, yet God still does his plan. That's right. David. David was bad. I don't, I don't mean like 1980s bad. I mean like he was bad. He decided that he liked this pretty lady he saw on the rooftop. So the way that he could, um, uh, well, that he actually did the bad, called her up, did the bad, and then tried to cover up the bad by having her husband out on the front line so that he knew he would die. Yet, Solomon's born from David and the sheep. See, the world might be messed up, but God still is in a place yeah. of hope. Yeah. And so in this lineage, we are reminded that in the line of David, this will happen. If you read in Matthew chapter 1, it even in my, in my version, it writes out that this is the time where these, this person right here, and, and I'm not, and you can look it up, this person right here is during the time of the Babylonian exile. Meaning we, the people who have hope in God, are kicked out of where we're supposed to be. We're in exile. And if you read a little more, there's this individual here, and it's after the exile of Babylon. Or the Babylonians. Now, for me, you know what? It goes back to that song, Captive, Ransom Us. When I'm taken away from where I want to be to, to, to have to live somewhere else where I don't want to be, that's not right. And so I have to have a hope in the Father and in His plan. And so, as I read these words, that this happened, where there's this exile, I don't think the exile was peaches and cream. Or let's go Thanksgiving, pumpkin pie and cucumber. <laughs> I don't think exile, like I know exile was not that. Exile was where people wanted to be free. They had strife, they had struggles, and in that time they had to have a hope. And it's listed in the lineage of the Savior. It says in the, king, in the days of King Ahaz, God once again narrows the line of hope. And when I said, what he's doing is he's like, just so you know, you can't make this mistake over here that hope is, that, that eternal hope is in, in, in this cult or hope is over in this or hope is in no Savior at all. Hope is narrowed down to this right here. A deliverer will enter the world. And so it says during King Ahaz's time, there's a prophet who writes this. The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be a child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. That person was Isaiah. Hundreds of years before the Savior gives hope to a nation that one is coming. This is how he's going to be born. Just make no mistake about it. This is how he will be born. Call him Emmanuel. One of my favorites of hope. See, because we have people in this world today, oh, don't hope in that. Don't hope in the Savior. There is no such thing as a Savior. But when I read my scriptures, not only because they're going, oh yeah, that'll never happen. Born of a virgin. That'll never happen. Never did happen. And how are you going to, you know, just because of your Christmas stories, you know, a star and, and some guys following it and knowing about it. And how did they know about it? Well, in my scripture, one of my favorites is in Micah. I believe it's Micah, 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 Micah. Um, it is Micah. Micah chapter 5, where it names the town. But you, ready? Bethlehem, Ephrathah. Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Okay, let's go back to this impossible thought process. I am hoping for one who has always been. I'm hoping for one who will rescue, who will ransom. I'm 
hoping for one. <laughs> and and uh, um, I think of it, when I study, if, if there's things that pop out of individuals to me. Um, every time I say the word Bethlehem, Sister Susan from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Yes. And so I, this is how family is connected and how when you talk about family like that, this is how that lineage line is passed down generation to generation because someone sits in the pew and goes, I'm from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, but I know of one from Bethlehem, a small place in Judah that has brought forth the Savior. Yes. Place of a, a, about 400 people. Is there in all of the circumstances that these generations went through, in the good and the bad, hope had always been. In every event that has taken place through time, with the lineage that's in Scripture in Matthew chapter 1, every one of those individuals had an opportunity to make a choice how they responded to hope. Okay, think about it. Can you imagine? In, I talked about Abraham, <laughs> the first one mentioned in that list. Of course, we all know that his wife laughed. <laughs> How can this be? I have the opportunity. If I was Abraham, this is how I see it. I have the opportunity to believe what you're telling me. Then me, this old, her, that old, we're going to have a kid? Specifically a son? I have the opportunity then to choose yes or no. Yes, I believe you. I believe in this hope. Or no, I don't. You're just crazy. Everyone that was in exile. Well, I sure hope we get out of this place. I oh, sure hope we go back home. I sure hope there's one that's going to rescue us. I sure hope there's one that's going to take us out. Can you imagine? That hope has always been. Can, uh, from, like, think of Noah. Oh. Sure hope this boat floats. <laughs> <laughs> think of those in captivity in Egypt. I hope that I don't have to raise one more brick to make one more pyramid. I hope that never again will a whip crack my back to work. I hope I can leave this place. I hope one will take us out of here. One walks up and says, let's go. All million of them. Hallelujah. I hope he's right. I hope can you, they're in the desert. I hope Egypt is still there because I'm going back. You, you understand the choices that can be made. I hope that Egypt is still there because manna stinks and I don't want to pick up another one every day anymore. I want to go back to Egypt. I want to go back to the whip. I want to go back to making it a, a pyramid. I want to go back to that pain. I hope nothing but wilderness and wilderness and wilderness. I hope I can go back to, to, to Egypt. We have every moment they had a choice of yes or no with what was going to take place. But they always chose hope. Yeah. I, my scripture for this morning will be Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 21. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. 
All this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. I said all that stuff before this point. Because even at the birth of the Savior, a decision of hope had to be made. Joseph, think about it. Joseph, however, but however old he was, there's always these questions. But here's what I know. Here's a guy who sees a girl, falls in love, wants to marry her, and he's righteous, so he, I'm, I'm knowing because it said he's righteous, he's doing everything he's supposed to, which means he ain't hanging out with her at her place, he's not having sexual relations with her before marriage, he's sticking to what he knows is right, and he's a righteous man. And in, so then, think about it this way. I hope that girl likes me. I've done this before. Check yes or no. <laughs> I hope she, ready? Will you marry me? I hope she says yes. There, there's always hope in this. There's hope in life. There's hope in this heart. And as she does everything, as she checks, yes, I, I really like you. As she says yes, I'll marry you. As, and I'm, I'm kind of joking around. I, they have their little rituals of how they do their engagement and stuff. And how I know all of that. But time don't allow us to talk about all of that. And so what takes place is you have a guy who loves this girl and he's going to marry her. And then it just goes to the wedding day and bam, she walks in a little bit like this. Yes! His, but his hope had to have been, shh, what do I do? As a good guy, I'm going to just, it, I, I, the scripture says it, I'm going to quietly put this, you know, we're done. Quietly divorce her. Quietly let her go to the side. That, that was his thought process of, of the plan. Mm. But can you imagine hope? She's not mine no more. His hope had to have been a little bit devastated. Before I get into his hope, bear with me for these few minutes. I love how scripture does it. Remember I told you how, how the line was narrowed where you have scripture where specific prophets really bring us to a point. This one is going to be the Prince of Peace, the Counselor. He is going to be born of a virgin. You'll call him Emmanuel. Pinpoint this. Oh, guess where he's going to be born? That's why if you need to go in the story, when the wise men came and, and, and when it was Herod, hey, 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 hey you, you smart guys, or supposedly smart guys, where's this place at? Well, it's in this right in here, St. Bethlehem. So pinpointing, the line is so narrow, and so it got even narrower for Joseph. Mary is pregnant. You're right, Joseph. But man, it was the Holy Spirit that did it. Yeah. You're crazy. That would mean that uh, I ain't no hope. You are out. Well, first I'm kind of freaky because of angels here in this dream. <laughs> no way. Well, he took what was really hope and said, hmm. The power of the Holy Spirit came over here, huh? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> the angel comes into his dream and says, one thing that I, that it, I would say, if you're ever in line or marking in your, in your Bibles or something, you know where some hope comes from? When an angel comes up and says, don't be afraid to do. Hallelujah. So I have hope in what's going to take place. And so I have an angel tell me, your hope is strong. Your hope... Don't be afraid. Stand up. Because I'm going to tell you this. When you wake, that's not how it goes in scripture here. But in my thought process, it's like this. Joseph, when you wake up, the world's going to see her 
just like you saw her and words are going to be said. They're going to say a whole different light than what you like. They're going to damage everything. They'll damage her. They'll damage you. They'll damage your family. They'll damage that whole life. you got to listen to your little scripture thing. They're going to damage everything. Unless you stand up strong. Because the world ain't got no idea of the truth in the hope yet. You will call him Jesus. He will save his people. I like in the in the writings here it says the angel kind of just emphasized. Oh, by the way, just so you know, hundreds of years before this, hope was planted. Be born of a virgin. <laughs> he will be called Emmanuel, which means what? God is with us. Joseph stays strong with his hope, wakes up, doesn't sleep with her, and when that baby is born, I'm going to say it this way, held in his arms, welcome hope, welcome Jesus. Jesus, which means what? The Lord saves. God is salvation. He is the rescuer. He is the ransom one. He is the hope of all the world. Because, and see, a lot of times the emphasis is on Mary. I understand that. But Joseph also played a role in hope. Yeah. Why? Because Joseph was part of God's plan for hope. not just for that line of people listed in the scriptures. It was not just for, as some people say, just for Bible people in these stories. Hope was for everyone. Now are ready? Because hope was for you. Yes! Hope was for you. Hope lying in a manger 
baby Jesus, the one to save the world, to bring peace to all mankind, not just Culver City, not just these United States, but to the whole world, to bring peace. And they chose to see that hope and tell everyone of the hope they had seen. We had it in, in the Advent reading, we had where the mention of Anna and, and Simeon, who, can you imagine, in their old age, going to church, I'm going to say it that way, all the time, waiting for hope. Simeon, let my eyes see the hope of the world. Let Anna, let me have, woo! Man, Anna was kind of cool, because Anna's like, she must have got so excited in her age, telling everyone she had seen the hope. Hope, you have to take it in. Receive the hope of the Savior, Jesus Christ. The good news that is to each and every one of us. It is your choice to receive the Savior. Your choice to receive the hope. Those of us that receive the hope. I'm going to go back one last scripture for Old Testament. Meditations chapter 38. Verse 21. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. Hallelujah. His mercies never cease. Great is His faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who depend on Him, to those who search for Him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. I hope that you accept the salvation of the Savior. My desire is that you hear the good news, not just this week, or the next three Sundays, or, or even New Year's, or whatever. I hope that you take the salvation of the Savior. Let us stand as we pray. If you do not know the hope, if you don't even know the good news, and you want to know more about the good news, it can easily start with one little thing. God, forgive me for not knowing the uh, uh, the good that I need of you. For doing the bad that you do not like. Forgive me, God. And may I come to know you better. The scriptures of, of having, of course, the song. God, give us the wisdom that you have. And on that path, I will go. So, God, your prayer should be, God, help me to know you better. You are my hope. For those of us I like the, the little thing, the banner thing. Good news of hope. An exclamation point. I love the exclamation points. You know why? Because that means you should have a heart to tell others about the hope you have. Let us pray. God, you are good and great. And God of this world so we look to you and we thank you for the Savior, Jesus Christ, that you sent, that touched this earth as a baby, grew up and, and died on the cross to bring us to you. That salvation, God, we take. It is not just a hope of a moment, but it explodes our hope to see you face to face. God, may we tell others about you and your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen.